Welcome to a new edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's edition, you'll get a first-hand look at some of the welding capabilities of the all-new PowerTig 255 EXT. We'll take you through a first-hand look at some of the initial testing that we did on this early production model. Since you will be seeing it first-hand and largely unedited, some of the video may not be ideal. We wanted to document just what we saw and experienced when we made our first test welds. Because we can't put every second of our first two hour test run into the video, we have boiled it down to the main areas of capability that our customers have asked us about. The first test we wanted to conduct was the high frequency start test. This is of course a concern to many of our customers, especially those who have delicate work to do. The first test was on 1 8 inch aluminum plate and starting an arc about 20 amps with a foot pedal in AC mode with the balance set to 35% and frequency set at 120 Hz. Our interest was to see if the welder would start consistently and start without a problem with stuttering or without a flare. Minimum start amps was set to 5 amps. Here we're going to make several start attempts. Notice that this is a repeat type test where we're just going on and off with the pedal. Now we are lowering the main amperage to 5 amps so the unit is forced to start and hover at 5 amps. Now we've got it fine tuned to 5 amps with the amount of preflow and postflow desired. Let's see how it does with the acid test and aluminum can in. So far, so good. Now the side. It worked once, but when the arc was struck again in the same place, it burned right through. Let's go back and put a little more heat on the canyon and weld an autogenous bead around the top. Not a trace of burn through and if we had had two cans and a little filler this would have been a sound weld. We'll save welding the cans together for another video. The next thing we'll weld is in DC. We've got an old wore out stainless boning knife that we're going to try to light up an arc on. It's fairly sharp but worn down. We just want to see if it'll strike and hold an arc on the knife's edge and then add a little filler. This is at 5 amp start and 3 amps welding. You can see the filter flickering at the low amperage because the tolerance was set too high.
Now we're shifting into the advanced AC pulse mode. This is where the welder pulses between AC positive and DC negative polarity. The AC is in the high amp stage of the weld and the DC negative is in the low amp stage of the weld. This is excellent for quick freezing the puddle and for welding on thin material and edges. Here we are playing around about 0.7 Hz on the back edge of a piece of aluminum angle. You can hear some contamination in the weld. This piece of metal was dirty and highly oxidized. Next, we turn the AC advanced pulse up to about 5 Hz. You can begin to see the effect that it has. We're using the 1 8 inch plate again and we're welding up to about 80 amps with the advanced square wave mode selected. If you look closely you can see the arc height is varying. This is intentional so that we can see how far we can push the boundaries of the arc. We're also varying the amps so that we can see how the pole is being affected. Even through the light stage of the lens, you can see how the puddle froze quickly and built up. Of course, we weren't pushing the amperage, but in a few minutes we'll push the amps up to about 125 amps, and we use the same pulse at 10 Hz. We managed to squeeze a few accidental dips in, but the unit didn't skip hardly a beat. We've increased the amps to 125 and the hertz to the maximum advanced AC pulse limit of 10 hertz. For those of you who remember Lee Majors, this frequency has an almost bionic sound to it. That's not a technical description, but that's my opinion. Overall, the settings seem to do real well. By now, the tungsten should have been reground as the arc was a little harder to strike, but it was more about seeing just how crusty we could weld with the welder. This plate was heavily oxidized and not cleaned at all. The second weld from the bottom is where we started, then we dropped one below it, and then we started working our way up the plate. Just as we had to do, you'll have to dial things in a bit when you start using the advanced pulse feature. We had to make a few changes along the way in both heat and frequency. One thing that is highly evident is the excellent control over the cleaning that you get with the advanced AC pulse. And this is another bonus. For this test, we kept AC balance unchanged at 35%. Pulse time on and the pulse amps were kept at a balanced 50% for this test.
for comparison, here's the standard AC pulse test. Pulse amps and pulse time on were kept the same, but you can tell a noticeable difference in sight and sound. This concludes today's video. We look forward to putting out more videos of this welder in action. If you have any questions or need more information about the Power TIG 255 EXT from Everlast, give us a call at the number listed above. Thanks for watching.